welcome to Gardening at 15 North. In this video I'd like to give you guys an update on my chili plants. So I think it's been about two months since my last update. On the previous update I had lots of flowers starting, um, but none of the peppers were really setting and they weren't going red yet. But now um, there's been quite a bit of cropping and I've been cropping continuously actually since that video. I did start with cropping green peppers, but they're producing so many now that even with um, picking them regularly they're producing red peppers and I'm also harvesting red peppers now. So they've done quite well. Um, some peppers, there's definitely been a difference in how long they take to ripen up and turn red. Um, for example, I'll start off with the um, Caneta here. This one is quite interesting. I haven't actually harvested any chilies on this because I wanted to show you how many chilies it had in a small space. Now it has grown quite a lot since it grew its first lot of chilies, so it's not such an extreme example anymore. But originally it had grown, you can see here, I think there's... Um, there's six chilies in the middle, these red ones. It had these original six, yet the actual plant was was tiny. It was probably just this little circle in the middle here. So all these side branches, so you can imagine all that was missing, and all that was missing. It was just a small little circular plant with six big peppers on it. So I was quite surprised, surprised at that. I've left them to go red just to show you how, um, how many there was in a small area. You can see it started to crop a few more now, but this one's really been stunted because I've not collected any peppers. The more peppers you take, the more the energy the plant has to put into grow from growing new peppers. If you just leave the peppers on the plant, what it does, it puts all its energy into these red peppers, and um, then once they're ripe, then only then can it have spare energy to grow and put out any new peppers. So that's why it's um, got a heavy concentration here of peppers, and elsewhere it's just one or two dangling around. So I've not actually tried these yet, I don't know how spicy they are, but they're supposed to be a lot milder than the Apache or the Piri Piri chilies. So this is the Caneta. It's actually the most compact out of all the plants. Stayed really low, it hasn't grown up at all. It is getting quite wide, so it, it's definitely gonna get quite a wide plant, but the, the Fergus has always stayed low, whereas on the Apaches, they actually grew up to begin with and then they fell down. This has always been growing low. It's been doing well. Ha I have had thrip problems on all of my peppers. Luckily, not too bad yet, but I'm gonna have to do something soon because there is some damage on some of them. This is probably the healthiest out of all the plants though. Probably also the smallest, but that could be not just because of the variety being a dwarf, but also because I've not been harvesting the peppers. It's interesting to see how big they are. They, they are quite large, nice red peppers. Um, so they do really look nice. So I'll, I'll harvest them soon, and hopefully tell you in the next video how spicy they are. The other two plants are my Apache, and my plant that I think is an Apache, but I wasn't too sure. I took it from a seed of an old plant I had for years. So starting with the Apache, this one is actually, there is a slight difference between this and the unknown unknown variety, which as I say, I think is an Apache. This one here, um, the leaves are slightly larger and also the fruit is slightly larger, whereas this one has much smaller fruit, but it has way, way more flowers and actually has a lot more fruit. So it's interesting, there's a lot more peppers in here, but they're smaller, uh, but about the same in spice, they're both really spicy. So as I say, this Apache has done quite well. Loads of peppers. I probably, probably harvested about 10 peppers off this so far this year. And there's loads more coming as you can see, quite a few of them are red. But there is some slight nutrient deficiency starting to show up. So you can see here, I think it looks a bit like it could be manganese deficiency, so I need to treat that. I'm going to give them a, a feed soon. I've been just been giving them a, a normal tomato feed, hasn't had any issues until now, so I'm going to have to give them some manganese as well. I have given them, earlier in the year I gave them um, Epsom salts to give it some magnesium, because peppers like quite high magnesium levels. I'll probably give them another Epsom feed with the manganese feed just to try and make sure there's no deficiencies. But this has done well. With these two Apache type chilies, what they tend to do is they grow straight up like this. Then as soon as they start fruiting, the weight of the fruit pulls it down and it grows into quite a flat plant. Um, and they don't really ever pop back up. I think what happens is they stay low for so long, the stem kind of strengthens in that position. It doesn't come back up again. But certainly when they're younger plants, they're actually a lot taller, right up around this height and then they flop down. So the patch has done really well, very happy with it. Very, very thin stemmed, uh, but they're, they're quite strong stems, so they're able to carry the heavy loads of uh, peppers, even though they do kind of sink down slightly. And with this one, which was my unknown variety, I've actually been harvesting things this a lot more. So I've maybe taken 10 peppers off this, whereas this one, it could be closer to 15 or 20 peppers. I've just been harvesting loads and loads, and it just keeps throwing out more and more flowers. Most of the peppers at the moment don't have too many flowers on them because I haven't been harvesting enough and because I've not been harvesting enough 
um, it reduces the flowering because all the energy is going into the peppers. But I did want to leave them a couple of weeks without harvest harvesting too many so that I can show you how many peppers the plants do have when they're cropping well. You can see this one is absolutely covered, loads and loads of chilies. And the nice thing about these Apache chilies is they're so spicy you don't need much per dish. So even though the chilies are small, one of these in a dish, big enough for one person, is plenty spicy. If I'm making a big pot for two or three meals, I'll maybe put two or three peppers in it. But generally you don't need too many of these chilies, so they're really efficient, they grow in a small space, but you get lots of heat from them. And the heat's reliable, which is really good. I've grown some other chilies which I have in aero types before, and they're, they're really unreliable for heat. Some would be absolutely blowing your head off really hot and spicy, other ones would be quite mild, so you wouldn't really know how many to put in a dish. You put in the average amount that's normally okay, but sometimes it wouldn't be spicy at all. Other times it'd be far too spicy. I quite like these these Apache ones, and PvP is quite good at that as well. They're quite reliable, always the same heat, so they're easy to cook with. And this one, as it has a lot smaller fruit, I think that's why the stems have stayed up more. They've not fallen down as much. The stems also seem just a very slightly uh, closer together. You can see they're branching a bit more closely, whereas these other Apaches seem to be kind of just long, uh, straggly stems. These ones are actually a bit more branched. Uh, the leaves are smaller on this as well, and I'd say the fruit is a bit smaller than the, than the Apache one here. Probably because this is an F1, this is an F2 hybrid, so it's less vigorous. But as I say, it's doing really well. I'm putting out loads of flowers all the time, even though it's covered in, crop, in, a, in a crop at the moment. They're still putting a lot of, of, um, of flowers out on some of these stems. Now, if I was cropping more regularly, there'd be a lot more, the whole plant would be covered in flowers like this. Um, but as I say, I haven't cropped too much recently, so that's why it's like that. And the growth of all these has slowed right down recently because all the energy is going into the peppers and not going into new growth. And then lastly, I've got my Piri Piri at the back here, which isn't a dwarf pepper, which is why it's so much larger. You can see it has got quite a size now. This again, this has been damaged by thrips. The thrips were actually worse on this one. I can show you some of the damage close up on the leaf down here. So this is the kind of damage you get from, um, from thrips. You tend to get kind of a silvering of the leaves and there's very small black dots as well. That's a sure sign there's thrips. The actual thrips themselves are really, really small, so they're hard to find. I'll, I'll see if I can get one on the camera for you now to show you what they actually look like. So there is a thrip on this leaf, and it's just next to the vein here on the uh, middle of the leaf. I'll just touch it very slightly, and it should start moving, so you can see which part is the thrip. And that's it there. As you see, it's really, really small, so they're hard to find. And uh, often you see the damage from the thrips before you actually see the, the animals themselves. So I'm going to put on some more um, parasitic mites to try and deal with the thrips. Hopefully that will keep the numbers under control. I find it doesn't completely eradicate them, but uh, it stops it from becoming too bad. The Piri Piri chili here has also had problems with aphids. That problem is pretty much gone now. Um, I put it outside for a few days when it was really hot sunny weather. And parasitic wasps and hoverfly larvae have come and done their job. And there's only a very few left on here. And I think the remaining parasitic wasps that are on this plant should hopefully deal with that. So aphid problem has gone. There is unfortunately some damaged leaves here. This could be from the aphids, but I think actually what it probably is is a calcium deficiency. So I'll give you a close up of that now. And you can see the deformities on the new leaves. That's quite common for calcium deficiencies in peppers and chilies. Now that can also be if you've got a heavy infestation of aphids, you can also get deformed leaves like that. But the aphid infestation on this wasn't quite bad enough to be expecting majorly deformed leaves like these. So I think this is the beginning of a calcium deficiency. So I will be giving this extra calcium, this plant, and I'll probably give a tiny bit to the other plants as well, just to make sure there's not a deficiency. That's something I've had a few times in these peppers in, in, a, in, my, in the compost that I grow it in. So you do get a slight calcium deficiency. And the Piri Piri hasn't been cropping terribly well. Um, you can see there are quite a few chilies starting to form, but I've not harvested any off this. It always harvests a lot, it always um, starts cropping a lot later than the other chili plants. Um, because it's a large uh, plant and not a, a dwarf. And also I find it doesn't crop as heavy, especially for the space it uses up. So it's an interesting one for me to grow, but um, I'm much more interested in the Apache chilies here. The amount of crop I can get in a small space is just phenomenal. As you can see this one, absolutely covered in peppers and I have been harvesting these a lot. So there would have been loads more. I can show you close up here and show you how many have been harvested. So for example here, there's two stems which have been cut. Those two there, moving along here, you should be able to see another two stems. So you can see those two stems there have also been cut. And all over here, there's just lots of cut marks from where I've taken the, pe the peppers off. So it's cropped really well, happy with the Apaches. So that's all for this video's update, I think. 
what I will be doing is I'll I'll probably crop a lot of these red ones because what's gonna what's happening is I'm getting a bit behind and some of these are gonna start going over. Luckily peppers are quite good, especially with the uh, the chili peppers, not so much large bell peppers, is that when they go over they do just kind of dry out and you can still use them. They don't go moldy or rotten or anything normally unless you've got really humid conditions. So they just tend to dry out on the plant and you can use them as dried chilies. So that's one of the good things. But I like to have fresh chilies because you get that nice flavour that you get with them. With the dried chilies, the flavour is a little bit different. You don't get that nice freshness to it. So I'll, I'll probably be freezing a lot of these. Uh, a lot of the red ones I'll probably cut off, put in the freezer, and uh, use them when I need them. Um, I'll leave one or two red ones just so I can use them fresh whilst I'm cooking at the moment. But I'm going to start storing a lot of these excess chilies in the freezer. That way, when it comes to winter, when these are cropping a lot less heavily, I can still have a good supply of chilies to keep cooking with. Also, when I take off the red chilies, it will mean that the plant isn't putting as much energy into the fruit on, the, on, on itself. And that will encourage the green ones to ripen faster. It will also put on more top growth and also more flowers. So I'll get a much, much bigger crop over the year. Now the actual growth, for the, so the, the final size of these plants isn't going to get a huge amount bigger. That's because they've grown about to the size the pots will allow. I would like to give them much bigger pots and have much bigger plants, but I don't have the space on my windowsill. I've got so many other plants, it's kind of limited to how much space I can, I can give these. So I will be keeping them in the same pots. So I won't be expecting these to be much bigger in the next update. Um, it'll, be just, it'll be interesting how many uh, fruit I have. I should have a lot of fruit still. What will happen is these will put on loads of new, um, new flowers and have lots of new fruit, but it won't extend the actual plant marks. It'll just kind of, what they tend to do is they put on lots of new flowers. They don't put on much more stem or much more leaf and it'll stay a very similar size. If I was to put them in a bigger pot, they would keep growing and then we'd get quite a bit bigger. The uh, dwarfs though will always stay quite low and small. The uh, piri piri here could turn into quite a large shrub eventually, um, but I obviously don't have the space for that. So I'll give you guys an update, it'll probably be sometime in autumn and uh, hopefully these are doing well if I can keep on top of the thrips and the aphids and the nutrient deficiencies. But at the moment they've been pretty healthy, we've had a really warm uh, July which has helped them a lot. Um, so hopefully, um, it's looking hopeful that they'll have another good crop through August and September, as long as the thrips and the aphids can be kept at bay.